shall find rest unto your soul. You shall find rest unto your soul. The piece which is showing here, uh, called Messiah, is part of a sort of larger body of work as well, which I'll sort of talk about in a minute, but I'll just sort of tell the story behind uh, this one. Um, my work sort of deals with narrative and stories, and the way that we sort of look at stuff that happens in the world, we construct a narrative out of that, and then how that narrative then shapes how we see the world. There's a very wonderful piece by an artist called Susan Hiller, which I think is like exemplary on this one, where it's about alien contact. And if you've had an alien contact in your life, the world you see is totally different than somebody who hasn't, even though it looks exactly the same. So, <clears throat> with Messiah, it was one of those sort of two o'clock in the morning ideas. I'd been doing a series of works about projections of the end of the world. So some of them were scientific, some of them were religious, some of them were frankly barking. And those imaginations only happen in text. There's no, there's no proof. You know, so the person who actually thinks the world will end because there are aliens driving a comet towards us is sort of as nearly as unprovable as a person who thinks that the, uh, the sun will sort of explode. So t around about two o'clock one morning, I had this idea of... I'd been listening to Handel's Messiah. I don't know why, but I had been. And then I had this idea that it would be very interesting to ask a group of musicians to put this in a different musical context. Now this was happening round about sort of 2003, uh, 2003, 2004. So the situation with you know, American government's resurgence right wings was sort of something which was very much in one's mind. So at the time I was in Berlin and I'd had this idea of wouldn't it be fantastic to ask a country western band to rewrite music for Handel's Messiah, for the libretto of it. Now outside the wacky element, there's another, what I thought for me was an interesting thing because the libretto of Handel's Messiah comes from a certain time and a certain debate about the relationship between the Old Testament and the New Testament. There was this big sort of battle as to whether the Old Testament was wiped out by the New Testament, i.e. whether Christ as a Messiah was actually the Messiah of the Old Testament or whether he was sort of brand new and there were two sort of two schools of thought. Now this may sound like a rather arcane argument but it wasn't. Because of Charles Jennings writing this, the idea that the Old Testament was also the Holy Writ as well as the New Testament means that all the things in Leviticus against homosexuality, against eating shellfish or whatever, all those laws became sort of applied and that's been sort of one of the engines behind a social movement in America, in Australia, in Britain, that sort of fundamentalist resurgence. And so that was the sort of the thinking behind this piece of work. And I was very fortunate in as much as you know one can always have an idea but actually making it happen is not necessarily that easy. But um, I just actually emailed somebody back in Australia and I said, by the way, do you happen to know a country and western band who are willing to rewrite all of the music for Handel's Messiah, by the way, I've got no money. And um, rather to my surprise, uh, I got an email back saying, yes, I do. And so over a period of six months, I got sound sketches being sent through from Sydney back to Berlin. And it was all developing fantastically. And then there was the problem, because I had no money, of how do I make a video out of this? So... The band all got together in a back garden in Erskineville. Their friends, their family, their wives, their husbands, all had every single sort of video camera that they could get their hands on. And they just shot stuff whilst they were sort of miming to the uh, records that they'd, uh, they'd made. And then this footage was sent to me in Berlin and I sat in an editing studio sort of trying to sync the entire thing together. So when you're watching it, there's the feeling at first that you're perhaps looking at documentary footage. 
but after about sort of five or six seconds you you know you realize that the sync's wrong or you're hearing a violin that is uh, not actually being played and I wanted to in a way foreground the the artifice of the thing because another thing that the uh, I hope the work touches on is say with these initially individual personal narratives these individual personal belief systems how culture is the engine that makes the personal into the general Brian Eno has this fantastic line about sort of choral music and choirs where he says it's the place where the I becomes the we and say with Handel's Messiah, we do see it as high culture. It's something that happens around Christmas time. It's classical music. We sit back, we enjoy it. You know, it's got all this sort of acculturation and friendliness almost around it. But when you actually look at the text, it's extremely bizarre. I mean, it's supernatural, obviously. And it's saying that if you believe this, you are not going to die. They're not being metaphorical. You know, this is not all symbolic. It's actual. You know, they, they go to great lengths to say, you won't die. You know, you will physically, in the flesh, come back again. Now, in a way, this comes back to the, uh, that moment about, in a way, alien contact. If you believe that, the world which you move through is a totally different world than for somebody who doesn't believe that. So I really wanted to sort of, um, in a way, bring back... <coughs> the weirdness and the spookiness, uh, and I don't mean that pejoratively, but the supernaturalness of something that we take, in a way, as granted, as an armchair, you know. So, I'm not sort of specifically referring to science, I mean, they all overlap in a way, you know, because again, they're, they're unprovable, they're, they're hypotheses, and they're, you know, it's a, always an act of, well, faith, in a way, you know, and it's extraordinary how that narrative drive works. I mean, it does shape our world in one way or another. When I first showed this, the number of sort of comments in, in, in the, in the uh, visitor's book were divided between uh, people really hating it because they thought that I was proselytizing to people who were really embracing it because they thought I was on the side of light. Um, and then sort of some people in the middle who couldn't quite make head or tail of it. And that ambiguity is actually very important to me. I'm not taking an editorial position in any of these. You know, I'm not being snide, I'm not whatever. I'm just trying to present stuff that goes through our lives, shapes our world in a slightly different way so we just sort of think about it or re-experience it. <laughs>